I presume what it means, Hashem, God, Yishmo, will protect you, will guard you. Tzeischa, your exiting, your goings, uvayecha, and your comings, from now until eternity. It says that this also refers to mezuzah. The mezuzah is protecting the person, tzeischa, uvayecha, when he's out of the house and in the house. But maybe it also means tzeischa, going out of exile, uvayecha, and entering the time, Me'ato from exile va'ad oilam until eternity. Just a thought, might be a deeper interpretation, explanation on the verse. Let us give some tzedakah, the doilet tzedakah shemekarev esis ha'geula, and as we say every day, let us have a dvar teira. The Gemara says the following. In fact, it's Gemara Sanhedrin, page 39. Oma lehahu minil rabavua. This heretic said to Rabbi Vo, Elokechem koyen hu. God is a koyen. He said, your God. But really, it's God. There is not your God and my God. There is only one God. So, why? Why is it that you consider God a koyen? Because Pasek says, in Truma, v'yikru le Truma. Give me Truma. And a Truma is the kind of offering donation that you give only to a Kohen. So he has a question. So how was he able to bury Moshe Rabbeinu? A Kohen is not supposed to render himself impure and then he has to purify himself. How did God become Tohir? So the Gemara says, Amalei, so the Gemara goes into, into uh, he told him, Benura Tovil. He immersed himself in fire. God is fire, and he immersed himself in fire. Because the passage says, This is God is coming from within fire. So he asks him, um, Is this enough? Is this appropriate? So he says, Yes. Really, the main immersion is in fire. The main immersion is in fire. Because the Pasuk says, And all those that you cannot immerse them, cannot go through fire, that's the one that should go in water. So in other words, we deduct from here that water purifies. I don't want to go into the details of this discussion here. But what do we see over here? That God immersed himself. But the question is another one. How can he get, make himself tummy? A coin is not supposed to be involved in funerals. Many explanations is given to it. And the question is specifically, is a coin God oil? A high priest? And a high priest is even for his own child is not supposed to go and render himself impure. Explanations that is given on that is because Moshe Rabbeinu, there was nobody there to take care of his burial. So it was considered the Meis Mitzvah. And if there is no one there to take care of a burial of a person, even the Kohen Godel is obligated to do that. We find in the parish of this week that the Kohen Godel, the high priest, in, this high, in the services of Yom Kippur, when he would bring the bull offering, he would then pronounce a prayer. He would atone. And what would he say? For himself and for his home. Sages tell us, In other words, he would make a special prayer and atonement for himself and for his wife. The highest day of the year. That's what he's thinking about. His wife. Nevertheless, says the Gemara, that from here we know that the Koyen Godel must be married. If he's single, he cannot do the services in the temple. Why? Holiness. He's separated from the whole world. But as we said yesterday, 
the whole idea is not to separate yourself from the world, to distance yourself from the world, as Nadav and Avir did. According to some opinions, they were not married. According to others, they had no children. In other words, they removed themselves from the mundane. Torah says the Koyen has to be involved in the world and through the world elevated and connected to the highest level. But in any case, what do we see over here? That the Kohen God has to be married. We are your wife. We got engaged on Mount Sinai. It's time for us to celebrate the actual wedding. The wedding is when the coming of Mashiach. So my friends, let us say Mazel Tov to our wedding. Let us take place today. Let us start celebrating our unification with Hashem. And we will certainly continue that dance which started the Nachash al Pesach, the Mashiach dance, and continued in the Besamikdash today.